Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash this weekend for a free $200 credit. Lynda.com is an online learning company that teaches software, creative, and business skills. Try Lynda.com for free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash this weekend. Today, managing the complexity with the web design process. Stick around and watch us work. Bienvenidos al episodio número 105. I'm just going to go with the numeric episodes because I'm starting to get confused before seasons. I am your host, Jose Caballer. I am the chief education officer of the school, an education company. Joining me every week, Ari Guimon, ladies and gentlemen, creative director extraordinaire. Thank you. Kind of applause. We should Woo. all applaud. We have, we have a live audience, too. Yay. Robert Haydock, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Haydock. Um, also joining us every week, uh, we have Tatiana Luthi, who is awesome and who is the... Uh, what, what's, your, what's your title? Your graphic designer and the chief coach and the chief coach for the school. Yes, a community builder. Community builder. Yes. There you go. Community builder for the school. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here today. This is a special episode. A user on YouTube, Kai, Kaye Bra, that's his. That's actually his username, which I think means, I don't know what it means, but Kaye means street in Spanish. He asked for something. Uh, he said, uh, with, here's what I'd like. What I'd like to have is an episode in, related to this episode, last week's episode, that is about the design process for dummies with user experience, et cetera, and including a simple PDF with different key steps broken down and simplified. So what I did for you was I actually put together uh, a blog post on theschoolrocks.com uh, with the web design process and with this episode's outline on it. So if you want to read more about this uh, particular episode, you can go to the blog, Managing Complexity with the Web Design Process, to schoolrocks.com, and you'll see it. So the, the goal of this episode really is to talk about this, and I want to get right into it uh, and begin uh, really just, Ari, sharing the journey. Um, I think that a lot of people who watch the show consistently, if you're catching it for the first time and you just stumble upon this, obviously we talk about web design, that's the title of the show. We take your questions, like uh, Kaya Bra's question, and we answer them. Um, but this is a very unique uh, uh, episode today, because what we're talking about is really the foundation, the core of everything that we're doing, of everything that matters in the 21st century, whether you're doing a website or whether you're a web designer or a developer or a business person, marketer, I don't care what you are, this is it. This is the foundation. All right, so the web design process um, how we evolved it, how I evolved it. If you guys uh, don't know, um, I ran an agency for 11 years um, after having worked at the corporate side. You know, here's a nice, pretty slide of that um, that you can see. Um, and you know, one of the things that really happened during that time, and that I got really good at, was at losing money, having <laughs> projects go over scope, and you know, clients giving clients more than what. You know that the that we could you know it's a problem that everybody has it's like Mr. Client, Mrs. Client. You know what is it that you need um, and have it whether it's a startup or whether it's a corporation. You as a web designer, as a principal, having to uh, manage the process of not just uh, giving them an estimate, but then of the delivery and of keeping it under certain budget so that you cover your costs if you have a team or. You know, just so that you don't work more hours or mm -hmm. more time than what you're being paid. And I think that this is the crux of almost any new web designer that's out there, or of a person who's managing a large team for the first time, or of a growing agency, um, of a digital agency, of uh, digital web design practice. There's a lot of flavors of what you can call it. You know, freelancer, like Ari, a mercenary. Uh, you know, it could be a small boutique agency with two, three people. It could be a 10 to 20 person boutique agency, and it could be a 200 person agency. This problem is pervasive across all of them, and we're gonna solve it, or not solve it, but we're gonna talk about it here. Where does it come from? Okay, Ari, so you have some experience and understand and if I give an overview, you'll, you'll, you, because you know this by heart, you know, you, you, we you, lived it, yeah. we've lived it for That's a long right. time. We're, we're super OG. So there's three basic phases for a project when, when the idea happens, uh, which is basically the, uh, uh, what I call the inception point, And I have a slide on there, which, uh, has all of them The building it, meaning the, you actually design and build the website and the releasing and iteration of that. And what I put together was, and we can cut back to me, Ari, during that idea phase, in your experience, 
what have been the most common um, challenges uh, within that? Talk to me a little bit about that beginning contact with a startup that you have. I mean, I think a um, number of challenges there. I mean, usually they have no clarity as to exactly what they're trying to do, but they think they do. Um, I think that's a big challenge that I've seen. Um, I think that there's what I've heard called, what you call the shiny object syndrome, where they basically just go through all the apps that are in the space, <clears throat> and they say, you know, I want this, I want that, just basically trying to cram way too much into what they're trying to do. I think that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen. So basically they get really excited about everything and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to do this. I'm yeah, and then that. they're like, well, how much will you do it for, basically, right? Like they just want a number um, and they sort of want a promise from you that if they give you that number, you'll deliver all those features back to them. And you basically have no idea whether you can do it for that number or not. You're not just, really. You're just hungry. That's right. right. That's right. And then you get into trouble when this thing, I mean, you accept it, but then you start peeling back the layers and the thing just gets bigger. I mean, in my experience, usually what you estimate, um, what you think it'll take, it takes twice that long is what I've kind of run into. Um, Which is a good way of looking at it. I like that. Yeah, it's T about twice as long. Tatiana, you're a newcomer to the space, so you're actually perfect because we can talk about it from that point of view. What have you experienced uh, in, in your first startup that you're doing now? Well, there's just like you said, there's so many aspects that you need to create clarity around. It's the money aspect. It's, you know, understanding the language of the client. It's understanding the language of the developers, of the team you're working with. Um, so it's a lot of communication challenges. Could also be, you know, dealing with people's personal issues and ego. So for me, the approach that I usually like to take on is how we relate to the team, how we work with each other, and how that can actually be rather complex at times if the team is not aligned with a clear intention and a clear mission of what it is that we all try to achieve together. That's perfect. And, and you talked a little bit about the team and it being about the team. And something that I'm doing right now, I'm reading the, the Steve Jobs biography. And, and I usually wait a little bit till it kind of all dies down and, and read it in a little bit in peace. And I'm at the beginning of it. I'm listening to it on audio tape from Audible.com, who should be a sponsor of this show because I use them so much. Um, the idea that, that the Silicon Valley in the 1970s and 80s, when Steve Jobs was doing Apple, was a, uh, uh, the perfect environment for the innovation, what they were doing. They were combining technology. They were collaborating between Steve Jobs, who was marketing, and you know he was engineering, you know, culturish, but he wasn't an engineer. He was more of a marketing and ideas guy. Where uh, Wozniak was a total nerd and engineer and couldn't talk to people. You know, the flaky, dor dorky, the dorky and the obnoxious coming together mm -hmm. to work on this because they had common you know, ground in the 60s and culture and music and um, the counterculture movement and you know, spirituality. Those were the common grounds. Mm -hmm. It was actually the personal that connected them. They were completely different people. Um, and I'm seeing, and I see that today. We are here you know, 30 years after uh, that time and now we, or more actually, 40 I think years after those times. Or let's say we're 15 years into a computer revolution that has changed everything. Um, and I realized after reading that, and I had a conversation uh, with Michael, who's uh, uh, awesome in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, shout out, uh, uh, joining the, who joined the school to do uh, uh, content produ produ uh, producing uh, for us, integration basically, sponsorship and uh, content producing. Um, and he mentioned this idea that uh, he's trying to set up an environment in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, for the startups to come, for the, those people to come together to do, mm -hmm. to innovate. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I felt like, okay, so what is it that the ingredient that creates that, that creates that inside you know, a community of entrepreneurs, of designers, of creatives, of, and I realized that it's what we're doing with the school, that it's giving them a common language, that it's giving them a higher purpose or a reason for being together mm -hmm. versus everybody in their own kind of camps, not right. talking to each other. And LA is notorious for that. Entertainment's over here, tech is over here, design's over here, art's over here, no one talks to each mm -hmm. other. Why? Because everybody's kind of freaky. Right. So, so, or afraid of each other. So you brought up the people issue, and, and I'm going to break it down exactly how it's here. Uh, and this is for you, Kaya Bra. And by the way, tell me on YouTube, what the heck does Kaya Bra mean? Because my guesstimate is it means street brother, which 
bra is, you know, and or or it could mean a bra, which is different. But I don't know what a street <laughs> bra is. Um, all right. So I have here this. Uh, if you click on the uh, the slide in the uh, blog post, you can actually get it. So in the idea phase, you mentioned it already. Shiny object, shiny object syndrome. That's I want everything. I want this. I want that. And the and the entrepreneur or even. Actually, the executive at a company, your boss, saying, "Hey, let's do it like this." You know, "Hey, Pinterest. Hey, the latest, greatest." Um, I had somebody who showed up with a comp for uh, what they wanted from us uh, when I was running the group that had like LinkedIn meets YouTube meets MySpace meets. Um, it was like four things or five things together. That's funny. The way I've heard it recently is like they um, like take a niche market and an existing product that's successful and then just mash it together. So like uh, the Pinterest for dudes. That's right. I or, just heard or, that on this week. That's startups. right. That's right. Typical or like the the Facebook for like prayer networks or whatever. I mean, just kind of people are just trying to replicate these things that they see out there that are successful and you know, they just kind of want to get on the bandwagon, but they don't really know what it takes to make Which it is, work. Which is, by the way, you know what? I think it's okay because that's a really great way of dry humping your first startup and learning from it. So if you're an entrepreneur out there and you're thinking of doing that, or if you're an Executive, here's something. Instead of me criticizing or being an an a hole about your intent to really go out there and do it, I say go do it and and have fun. And what, what the Pinterest for for pets, you know, whatever it might be. But that's you know, right. do do it because you're going to learn, and that's the only way you can really learn. A lot of people, you know, again, of course, make sure that financially it makes sense and that it's a it's a it's a, it's an authentic kind of you know uh, that you can, basically you have the ability to do it, but um, I don't know. The, the, I, I, I could, I could, vice versa. I could say, you know what? Stop effing doing that, you know, and get upset about it. But I, I think that that's the only way that you learn is by doing it. That's by the making way mistakes. I, I learned by doing sure. it by yeah. making the mistakes. I, I have a hard time telling people what to do. I can say, well, I can help you or I can share my experience, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. And I've done that with a lot of friends that I see doing startups, and I see them making all the mistakes. Do I stop them? No. Um, they won't listen to you anyway. They won't listen to you anyway because they're so like, oh, focus, this is what I want to do. Me and you have talked about this yes. where I say, look, this is with love. I'm just sharing my experience. Right. Do what you're <laughs> going to do because you're going to learn it. Um, so, okay. So the, 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 the next phase, I'm only going to talk about the challenges, uh, Calle. Uh, execution. This is designing and building. So during this phase, the biggest challenges that I've seen, and again, this, and if you read the blog post, is based on my experience. Different languages. You know, tech people speak a different language, then designers speak a different language, business people speak a different language, and you see them talking to each other and they're like, What are you saying? You know, I, I have no idea what you're saying. And no one's willing to in a way translate or to speak in a neutral way. The different thing is alignment and functionality. At a corporate level, every single department is gonna have a different interest on what they want from the website, and you have to figure out how to, or an, even a nonprofit, a large nonprofit who has different departments, so development, you know, marketing, uh, you know, uh, there, there's all these different types of uh, components of an entity of an organization uh, that need to manifest themselves. And everybody wants to make sure their stuff is in the first iteration of the website, all at the same time. Even if it's against the best interests of the company, which is the Oh, yeah, they don't care. Yeah, it's all care. about me. It's That's like, right. I'm, I want this on the website. And, and they, they really fight politically. High friction fighting, I see it all the time. I'm, I'm, I've been in this for 16 years. I mean, I sit back and I'm like, Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, sure. Fight, and I'm, I'm obviously, I'm, I can't take sides. I have made the mistake of taking sides, and it's not good. Um, lack of an adaptable process. That's actually a huge one during the mm -hmm. execution phase. People try to build a website like if they're building a freaking washing machine. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. Where are all the parts that we need? Let's define it. Let's bring it together that's and let's right. assemble it. And that doesn't let you change. It doesn't let you change. It doesn't let you change because you're always going back to that list of features that you promised even if the product is starting to change before your eyes, right? Like, as you're defining it. One big thing is the industry changing. That's right. I see this all the time. You start a project, you know, six months long, you know, two months into it, you know, a lot of things change, but you have a fixed fee contract and everybody's kind of freaking out and you're late. You're always late. Whatever you release, you can never catch up with the market. Mm -hmm. The marketplace always seems to be going, what is it about those people that can go really fast to market and innovate so quickly? Why can't Apple release a product every six months? You know, it's really, a lot of it is ingrained into the culture, into mm -hmm. the people, into who they are. Yeah. It has nothing to do with, you know, the mechanics of the business. Um, well, it does have a lot to do with mechanics of the business because, like you said, the people are really at the end. In knowledge work, it's about people. Right. 
it's not make so machines. we have structure and we have mechanics and everything but what's missing is the human soul behind oh, it. the soul of the, the machine the that's what you're talking about yes. people building software require an operating system a soul the school os all right there moving on so the the third thing in the launch phase so again kaya i'm just going through all the challenges uh the idea of uh, release and iterate, you know, this is where you kind of release the site. The three things, no launch plans, like what are all the steps we're going to have to take, what are all the things we have to do from a marketing standpoint, you know, w just really planning out the sequence for the launch and doing it quietly. A lot of companies do a fanfare, we're launching, and everybody's like going, grinding to make sure they make the launch date because they've announced it to the press or they've announced it publicly, they've made big commitments for media buys, for example, when you're doing ad campaigns, and, and that is the biggest cluster F in the world, you know, of doing it that way because you know people are going to be staying up for four or five nights in a row just trying to get that launch done and it's going to be kind of crappy at the end. Um, so please, don't plan big launches, plan a lot of little launches. Um, not knowing what to do next, which goes back to the little launches. People try to launch like if they're putting out a big product into the marketplace. Software is not like that. Software is really an iterative thing. And, and adaptation, actually, is horrible when you release too many features. So people think that more is better because you've been buying in the 20th century based on functionality and features. And the more features it has, oh, it has a, a, you know dry cleaning in my car. Wait, no, that's not a feature in a car. Wait, what are, <laughs> Power steering. Power steering, there yeah. Um, and then finally, th there's no systems to capture learning. Like, what are you learning from your users? And, and sometimes you don't even talk to your users. During the process, you're just guessing, this is what I want, and I tell my development team, and we build it, and we put it out, and you haven't even talked to a user all the way through that cycle. Actually, that's a problem, and I have it here on the launch phase, the user testing part, but you need to do that way at the beginning, meaning the validation during the inception phase. The inception phase is also known as discovery, and we did an episode two episodes ago, the last episode of last year, about how to use the discovery phase. Why do we call it in this inception? The reason why I changed it from discovery to inception is that traditionally the discovery phase is used to uh, find out what it is that you're going to build, agree upon it, and make a contract and move on. That's a very traditional you know, mode of working. But I believe that the inception phase is where you actually test and validate the idea, whether you're a corporation or not. All of the, you're basically doing the first try. I don't care if it's a, a, a click-through that's fake uh, and you show it to people. I don't care if it's a functional prototype. You know what I'm talking about? Totally. Sometimes it involves like a technical validation too, I've seen. Like people come in with an idea, not really knowing if it's actually possible to do on the phone. And folks that I work with will do a tech evaluation for them. Like basically go into the devices and say, um, <clears throat> you know, this idea that you have is feasible or it's not. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot that is done before you actually get to start on the project in order to define what it's going to be. You know, some t sometimes people come in off the street with an idea they have no idea, like, not a real will clear sense. Will this really work? Yeah, will it really yeah. work? That's right. And, you know, that brings up a really good point. And, and, and it's, it's a, so we're in the 21st century now. And, you know, the 20th century, and I was talking about, you know, uh, m me reading the story of, of Steve Jobs and uh, uh, the, the environment that was there in Silicon Valley. So now we're in the 21st century. The economy's crap. Um, people have, uh, you know, been suffering for the last three, four years. Uh, industrial workers, you know, what the hell do we do with people that are trained to work in factories who have, you know, high school degrees or a little bit of college, but that don't, ha they're not engineers, they're not Steve Wozniak, they're not even Steve Jobs, who, who went to one of the best, you know, liberal arts schools in the world. Okay, he dropped out and just showed up to classes, but it's still one of the best liberal arts schools in the world with great drugs. But um, the 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 Reed College in uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. You know Reed College, Robert Haydock? Yes. Where is it? It's in Portland. It's in Portland. It's right by your house. On the east side of Portland. Are they really all hippies and smoke weed all the time, or not anymore? Somewhat. They're Somewhat. Super intense. Super intense. So so that's the, the point about that about the education that we have today is that I believe that people are not being trained for the 21st century. Mm -hmm. We're still putting people out for the 20th century with, with like they, they, they pop out of the proverbial womb of our education system into a completely foreign place and they want to jump back in the womb. All right, sorry, that's a horrible like, kind of like side. They turn around, they're like, woo, we're jumping back in. No, but it's okay. true though. I mean, I feel bad for a lot of these people that are coming out of college right now with these debts and, and they're not trained for what's really going on. 
The but people that are getting trained, go ahead, sorry. Well, actually, I don't even know if they, I think it's the mindset that we're being trained in. And, you know, sometimes the people that we're trained by, they don't even know it themselves, that we're right. still being trained in that old mindset. So it really takes outside of the box thinking and just really burst one's own glass ceiling and our own assumptions that we have about how we go about business and about how we go about projects and visions and ideas. And that's what I really love working with you, Jose, because what you teach in your systems is exactly a complete brand new approach that really allowed me to go beyond my own assumptions on how to do something. Yeah, and, and before you all start yelling at me on YouTube about, oh, all you're doing is you know advertising and marketing for your system for the school, look, what you're learning and learning from me is learning my experience. I'm putting it into a system because it's easier to understand, otherwise I couldn't even keep it straight. But here's the idea or the point that she just made. Uh, and going back to Kaya to your question, next week we're going to talk about the process step by step. You know, the tools that we use, the inception phase, what do we do? The execution phase, what do we do? And the launch phase, what do you do? And we're going to focus on inception, uh, but we're going to really go through each of those steps for you and talk about how you can structure a project. So I'm going to recap this very quickly and, and contextualize it to what just happened here. Um, and also something that Robert Haydock and I were talking about a little earlier uh, that's important. I don't know, if they, do they have your screens up or no, no. just mine? Um, one of the things that, that, that is interesting is that I was, uh, uh, I'll do the recap in just one second, but one of the things that's interesting is I was mentioning that lynda.com, uh, are, are one of our sponsors. Um, they, they're I think 16, 15 years uh, into it and they do online video education uh, and they help you create um, uh, whatever you need to create. You, all the tools are there. You have so much access to all the tools that it's not even funny. Um, you know, just go to lynda.com, check it out. Go to lynda.com this week in. You know, you want to build a startup, you got all the tools. You want to build a website, you got all the tools. You want to learn how to do a keynote, you got all the tools. You want to learn how to use Microsoft Office, you got all the tools. You know, anything that you need to do from a computer standpoint, is freaking available. There's so many dang videos. And I did a tour the other day. They do 300, 400 videos a year. You know, they, they, they're, they're epic in their output. Uh, even though they haven't raised venture funding, I think, in their whole 17-year history, recently they, they announced that they raised 100 million in funding to grow and to, to, to expand you know, lynda.com across the world. That's what I'm talking about, that you can do whatever you want to do because everything is available online. Now we come to the summary. So if everything is available online, if you can do anything, the question is, where do you start? And how do you do it with other people? Because I don't care. You're not Mark Zuckerberg combined with Steve Jobs. What's that thing in, uh, what's that thing in uh, South Park when they put, they put an episode where they put three people together based on that German horror movie? It was just awful. Um, it's a human centipede. Do you remember that? That sounds gross. That is gross because the person in the front poops <laughs> and the person in the back. All right, let's not talk about human centipedes. But you're not a combination of Steve Jobs, Zuckerberg, and you know, and Paul Rand, you know, the Uber design tech and marketing person. You, I, I have, I'm good at design and, and marketing. I'm loud and, and, and creative. That's it. So I need to collaborate with people like Ari. They're more dorky and more technically oriented. Uh, people uh, uh, that are more business oriented in order to build a successful business. Now, it's scary to do that because you might not have the language to, say, to, 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 to coordinate that, to make that collaboration work. So ultimately, the different components of what you see me teaching you are to allow you to do that. That's it. It's really the tools, the language, very specifically, to facilitate the collaboration and the execution um, and letting you thrive in a digital economy, in a digital century, in the 21st century, whatever you want to call it. Look, Linda, all of the different you know, tool sets, all the different education things that we talked to you about here are available. Go learn it. Now, we here on This Week in Web Design, soon to be The School Live, we're going to share with you the process, how to, how to use those tools in order to accomplish and reach your goals to do what you're doing. Think of us as the roadmap. Think of us as you know, your, your friends for the journey. All right, now that sounds like a real... <laughs> the Sherpas. <laughs> the Sher Sherpas. That sounds like a real hippie show. We'll be your friend on the journey. So let's talk about that journey. Here's why. Next week, we're going to talk about the three steps in the process, inception, execution, and launch in detail. Remember in detail that the reason why these things are important and the challenges that you have, go to the website, theschoolrocks.com, 
and it's the first blog post that you'll see, uh, read it and understand it a little bit more, what I'm talking about. Understanding the obstacles and understanding yourself are really the mm -hmm. first steps you have to take in order to figure out how to overcome it. What we try to do is we try to use the tools and just go what I call the dry hump and do it without knowing how to do it. That's horrible, too. The metaphors are getting a little bit off hand. <laughs> um, but, but instead of dry humping it, <laughs> uh, learn how to do it really well uh, once you have all the skills. Because everybody can gain a lot of these skills. The question is, how do you use them for good? How do you right. use them to move the, the needle forward? How do you use them to not only be to make money and live in the 21st century, but ultimately, what the hippies doing LSD in Silicon Valley in the 60s, uh, in the 70s and 80s were really seeking, which I really, A, they were seeking, they were seekers. Mm -hmm. They were seeking a higher you know, experience for humanity. What's Enlightenment. Next? Enlightenment. The personal computer is a product of the search for the next evolutionary step in humanity. I'm, I'm reading this and I'm going through that and I'm like, oh my God, these guys were looking for the door to, to heaven. This is all Wow, that was a theory. mouthful. <laughs> no, no, but I'm it's true. Serious. And I think right now the next one is the, the cyborg, even though that sounds totally crazy. Well, Kurzweil just got hired by Google to be their head of, uh, I don't know, what the hell, of human computer totally. integration. That's totally. He's the I mean, head of like, we're going to figure out how to make you into a human centipede. I see it all the time. With, uh, <laughs> with a Mac behind you. And, and I, that's horrible. That's messed up. I got to stop watching South Park, uh, okay. but the point is that that in this journey now comes a time when the only real, so a lot of startups happening, ecosystems developing, going back to the point about uh, Phoenix and about my conversation yesterday uh, with, um, with uh, 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 Michael, he said something interesting and I had just finished listening to, to a chapter in the book. And he said, we're trying to replicate you know, this ecosystem, an ec create an ecosystem here in Phoenix. Uh, and we love what you're, you know, I love what you're doing with the school uh, because it's helping us. And I realized that the meetups in you know, Boston and San Bernardino in here in West LA mm -hmm. that you're doing and Philadelphia that are coming up you know, of sharing the school and sharing the school OS, um, are doing that, are helping create that ecosystem, are pushing forward what's next. And me and you together came to the realization that what we need is really the ability to collaborate right. uh, in order to be able to execute. Right. Uh, it's too hard to do it alone. Yeah, it's too hard to do it alone. And collaboration requires empathy, it requires deeper understanding of yourself, mm -hmm. it requires a higher purpose and a drive. That is a very non-20th century mindset, right. and the 20th century was ruled by white dudes, um, and the 21st century is changing. Yesterday's inauguration was like, what? Martin Luther King Day, we have a black president. You know, his entire you know, speech was about the 21st century mm -hmm. in, to some degree, um, and it doesn't matter who I voted to, Mitt Romney or Obama, and I'm not going to tell you who I voted for. Um, but um, the idea is that the realization I came to from the data and from what I've been seeing with the school and with what I've been building is that there is a unique place for women in technology in the 21st century as leaders to help us make right. this transition. Right. So we've built it to where it's now huge and it's ruling the United States economy. Mm -hmm. Technology is just you know, pervasive. I walk into an airplane and Every person is on a tablet or a smartphone, and you know you see kids playing and two years old. They're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. so it's really happening, yeah. and there's no stopping it. How do we use this? How do we build the 21st century? Who's going to lead it? Tatiana, caller <laughs> <laughs> from, from Pittsburgh. Wait, no, you're not from Pittsburgh. From the west side of Los Angeles, where all the Prius driving people live. Well, I totally agree with you. I think, you know, so far, um, humanity, and I would say especially men, have done a really good job in building a foundation and a structure and the mechanisms on how to create, you know, a safe life for, <clears throat> I don't know, for many of us. And what I said earlier... In the West? In the West, correct. And um, how can we take that now? How, how can we take that mechanism and how can we infuse it with a little bit more soul and meaning and purpose that really stands for the flourishing and the goodness for everybody? Everyone. And That's how I see that? it. Well, I consider that kind of like a, an expansion from creative self-expression going into what I call an evolutionary expression, where you use yourself 
and the vehicles that you, you have, you know, the professional vehicles and what you've learned and your experience, and you package into a business model that actually makes a contribution. You're talking really evil there. I don't think it's an evolution you're talking about. You're talking about an evolution. <laughs> uh, I'm joking. By evil, I mean, you know, you just said the word the packaging business, business models, yes, right? Yes, But But what's interesting in what you're saying, and, and I'm, I'm reading, con uh, you guys are going to think that I read a lot, but um, I pace myself. I'm reading uh, one book on audiobook, and the other one I bought at Whole Foods the other day, uh, Conscious Capitalism, the CEO of Whole Foods mm -hmm. just uh, came out with that book. And, Oh crap! There's a signing this Thursday that I'm hoping I can show up to, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not a Whole Foods fanboy, but um, it's kind of expensive. The idea is that um, capitalism in the first chapter, which I read in the car on the way home, um, I wasn't driving, uh, was really about the '60s and uh, and the counterculture affecting business. So Whole Foods was mm -hmm. born around the same time, uh, same time as Apple-ish, or after that, uh, within some of the same kind of premises and cultural context of it. Um, but the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning it is because um, this idea of the business and the left brain of it and the spreadsheets and the stock market driven part of it, uh, which is a totally different conversation for another show um, in the fact that we're talking about web design process, what the hell are we talking about this? Um, all of those things were very left brain and quantitative mm -hmm. and we're going into hybrid time where we need to be able to be both you know, design and math need to live together. Engineering right. and art need to live together. You know what I mean? Yeah, infuse it with um, quality now, qua not just quantity and quality and value. With, with quality, because that's actually the right thing to do. Like putting out products and having low quality products because it's the most profitable thing to do is pretty douchey. You know, mm -hmm. it's like what. What's the point? Yep. You know, there is no point. So there's almost a higher purpose in what you do and whatever you do. So that merger that's occurring and this transition that we're going to, uh, going through, is extremely important in what we're talking about in this show, um, because a lot of it is being driven by, by digital. A lot of it is driven by new business models. A lot of it is being driven by Ari, who is you are the new, you know, uh, artisan. You're the new craftsman. Yeah. You are what 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 in the in the Renaissance was you know you know bing, 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 sh, you know creating awesomeness you know new devices and new things and you're not doing that alone you play a part in a team that's you know, right and Martin and all the other people that that you work for are collaborators they represent dorky and uh, evil uh, and you're dorky and flaky and 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 you're doing that right. How, how, based on our conversation about what you realize in evolution, why are we doing what we're doing? Why are you here? Why are we doing merge? You know, why are we, and tell people what merge is, first mm -hmm. of all. And if we do have that slide, that would be great. If we don't, that's okay. It's a slide that says merge really big on the top. Um, oh, there we go. Look at this. Explain to people what this is. Well, Merch is a two-day conference for women who are really passionate about merging their passion and their values and what it is that they stand for with their career. So it's all about how can we build a meaningful and purpose-driven livelihood as a expanded expression, creative expression of the self, so it becomes a vehicle to make a difference in the community. And that's really a reflection of who I am, of what I stand for, and I, I model that inside the Merge Conference, inside everybody that I'm coming in contact with. And I see myself really as an inspiration for other women to do the same. We can do that. We can merge our passion and our profession. And you're interested in that you were a banker, a Swiss banker. Yes. So you basically worked for the people that hide all our money here in the US. Um, <laughs> And you became a graphic designer. You, we, you went right. to the same school that I went to, yep. Art Center College of Design. Right. Why the hell did you do that? Like, what was the shift? I guess, again, um, it had to do with seeking for something, seeking something that might be a little bit more fulfilling and a little bit more meaningful. So I came across design. And, you know, I did go and I went to see a professional uh, counselor in uh, Switzerland about career counseling. What did they say? And he said, mm, you are creative. Oh, you should do something creative. And I'm creative. I didn't even know what that meant. It was wow. not something that we used, you know, the way I grew up. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in a very service-oriented culture. It's all about, you know, banking and insurance. So I, I really had to actually Did you explore. grow up in Zurich? Where, no. Actually, next to Zurich. Next to Zurich. It's called Kanton okay. Argau. Oh, and, um So, yeah, it became a whole quest for me, you know, to see what that really is and what that really means. But the reason why I find it fascinating is because your quest is very... Um, not unlike 
what a lot of our audience has been going through, Bo both men and women going through this quest of seeking something greater than themselves, I including me. I'm like, you know, I can't just be, you know, a digital agency for the rest of my life. This, this is just gonna, you know, I, I try to make it better. Like I try to figure out what are the problems with it, how can I make it mm -hmm. better, and how can I make it less painful, which is, which is, I, I'm not sure who or why you would just put up with it and not seek, you know, you know, to improve it. Does that make sense? Totally, totally. I think initially it was more of a personal quest, and then it expanded into, into something larger, into something bigger, especially what we were doing with each other with the Merge Conference. L let's talk know? about the other people that are going to be uh, at the Merge Conference and get their points of view. Are they on by any chance? Okay, are the callers let's on? Let's see. Um, Lena should be right. on. Um, how can we talk? We're going to end it. So here's what I'm going to do for those of you who are watching and who are like, where the hell is this conversation going? Uh, so first of all, um, it's... We're done with talking about the process and the challenges. We're going to talk for the next few minutes, about five, ten minutes, um, with uh, with our guests, and you can introduce them while while they're uh, coming on. With two guests who are going to be participants, panelists at the Merge Conference, uh, and when is the Merge Conference? Is on the second. There's a couple of conferences that I need you guys to know about. Uh, many of you, many of you are coming to the Launch Conference or the Launch Festival. Um, which is, uh, if you know your dates, it's on March 4th and 6th. The weekend before, March 2nd, and... Uh, no, the meeting hasn't ended, so the challenge could be uh, that uh, I am logged off from it. Um, so I'm going to actually go back on it, my meetings, and I am going to get back on it. Uh, merge guest speakers, start. Um, I think that's could be what it happened. Uh, there we go. Uh, it, I'm on now, so it should be on there. So, and let's turn off go to meeting. What I was saying was that launch conference is actually by far something that, you know, you went to the launch conference, Robert Haydock. What did you think? How many times have you been? Once or twice? Once. Once. Yeah, it was unbelievably good. It was unbelievably good. What did you like about it? Just the atmosphere, all the creative people, and talking to lots of random projects that are happening in startups and at different stages. So it's festival. I have it here up on my screen. It's festival. Uh, launch.co. You've seen me posting a lot of this stuff on the uh, on the Twitters and on the Facebooks. Um, and, and the reason why I would recommend that you go and, and Jason Calacanis is giving away uh, or is doing one dollar tickets for those of you who might be broke or are unable to afford the the the, the three hundred or the thousand dollar version of it. You know, I, I I had a lot of friends go last year and people that I've invited. I have a whole class from Berkeley, uh, from their bit entrepreneurship class, um, a gentleman that I met at the airport in uh, Pittsburgh. And I said, hey, you should have your class come to. He teaches exactly this. He teaches innovation within the corporate structures. And we had the conversation about the challenges that we just talked about uh, at the beginning. Uh, why is it that it's so challenging to execute for companies in the 21st century? And I've been speaking on this over and over again at conferences. Um, and, and I continue to get invited to talk on the topic um, because it's so, like, it's right now, it's happening. People see the news and the Zuckerbergs and the Apple and the, you know, and the Samsungs and the blue, they look at the blueberry. And the, what is that? Uh, Blackberry. Uh, <laughs> I like blueberry. The blueberry, yeah, that's a better company. But, and the blueberries of the world. And, and they're like, wow, why are those companies? And the reality is that most of America is made up of, you know, 20th century industrial companies. It's your manufacturing, it's your services, it's your, the, the most of America is not publicly traded, you know, Fortune 500 NASDAQ tech companies. Where the hell are they represented, you know? What is the next movement within those, you know, how do those companies transition into right. the 20th century? So the launch conference is a real insight into the startup community and the lessons that you can really bring to that, whether you're a designer, whether you're uh, a developer, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're whatever you are, um, this is really a great opportunity for that. And I, I would definitely, are you going to be there? Yes. Yes. So I March. Mean, the fact that there are so many different people from different kind of disciplines in there, talking and collaborating and sharing ideas. I mean, that's something really interesting in and of itself, right? It's not a design conference, right? It's not. And something that's really interesting is that you actually talk to history. So I was just in reading, you know, the history of Apple, Atari, which uh, we're sorry, but filed for bankruptcy yesterday. Uh, it happens. Um, they were instrumental in Apple in that Steve Jobs worked at Atari before. And uh, Bushnell, the founder of Apple, was a speaker at Jason's 
launch EDU. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got to meet him, you know, at one of the launch events. And, you know, he's a crazy, you know, you know, you know, bubbly, you know, big guy. And I was like, this guy's awesome. He's crazy. I've seen him speak before here in L.A., uh, but you're in the presence of history. The investors that are there, and they're very accessible. Mm -hmm. The people who've made the 21st century are at this damn event. And if you can get to go from L.A., San Francisco, Pittsburgh, wherever the hell you are, um, and come to this for two days, and four days now, they added a hackathon, great. But the weekend before that, March 2nd and 3rd, um, we're doing the merge conference. Right. And if you bring the slide back, are we, do we have the folks and on the line? we have Lena, yes, we have Lena great. on the phone. So let's just ask Lena, you ask Lena, you talked to her, you know, why is she right. getting involved? Why is she doing the merge conference? Why is she participating? What's her story? Right, so let me, let's see, Lena, can you hear us? Hi. Can you hear us, Lena? Lena? Call her. I can hear do we, do we have, you. Are we able to? I, I, I muted all the computers in here. I am. So, so Oops. go ahead. Yes. Hi, Tatiana. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hello. Lena. Thank you so much for being here with us today on the live stream. So maybe just to give a little bit of a context, Jose, um, why we're doing this today. It's really all about um, giving our listeners as well as our women who have registered for merch, as well mm -hmm. as the ones who have not registered, a little bit of an insight and give them a little bit of a context of the kind of conversations that we would love to engage in the merge conference. Yep. And um, just a little bit of background about Lena. Gina Bird Romero was also going to call in. She couldn't be here with us right now. Something came up. But uh, Lena Shanklin and Jeannie and I know each other from a global um, women's leadership organization with a special focus on training women in leadership. Interesting. What's and the name of that? Um, there's, diff there's different courses available. It's um, called Evolving Wisdom, and okay. they have courses, you know, Calling in the One, Feminine Power, but I didn't want to go into the names because a lot of people it sometimes... It sounds so <laughs> like, uh, man, come on. But you know what? It is what it is. It's okay. That's so awesome. There's nothing wrong with and it. And so the whole point is to just don't, don't really... Don't be ashamed. You know... Um, you got to own it. You got to yeah. own it. Yeah. <laughs> There should be there should be a, a course called Flaky Power. There you go. The power of flakiness. That's gonna be the title of my book. Anyway, For the school, yeah. yeah. And so I was just saying. So Lena and Jeannie uh, really specialize in teaching leadership skills with you know tools like spiritual tools and psychological tools that really so that's interesting that what you're talking about because the conference and one of the reasons why it's women only and one of the reasons why that insight came uh to you and i at the same time is that women and men learn very differently mm -hmm. and the motivations for what they do are very different and i started learning that in my coaching and all the events that i was going to and i realized you know what this has to there is there is a reason to do it this way and and it allows for a broader conversation that not everyone necessarily is ready for or right. open to or right. needs even um, so what what can, can you and lena share with us and with our viewers, uh, especially those who, who are considering coming to the conference, especially those that are, are, are like you, uh, seeking uh, and making this transition in the 21st century, what are the things that, what is it that attracts you to the idea and why are you participating in it? Do we want to have Lena answer that first? Yeah, Lena, feel free to chip in, or I can just get started. Uh, you can start. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, intro that. You know, again, it's 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 all about merging passion and profession, and 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 looking at what are the assumptions and what are the glass ceilings that kept us basically imprisoned in our own four walls and didn't allow us to go beyond the greater capacities that we actually carry within ourselves, right? So if you look at it from a historical perspective, we all kind of grew up with this idea that you can't really merge your passion with your profession. They're separate things. Yeah, they're, they're two not separate one things. Thing, yeah. Correct. You have to yeah. sacrifice one or the other. You can't be a mom and be a career woman. You can't be, you know, uh, uh, whatever you choose as your profession is for breadwinning, not for, you know, human. Work is not supposed to be fun. That's yeah, right. That's what we came up with. with that? Selena, did you wanna did you wanna chip in a little bit on that topic? Sure, I'll jump. I'll jump in here. I mean, this is uh, this is both for men and women that we've all kind of come into the 21st century here, with our models of success that have come from our like families and cultures. You know, it's all about accomplishment. And for women in general, this very general, but it was to get an education, a good job, make a good living, get married, have kids, and that was what a successful life really looked like. 
And I can say some of us got there and felt completely off track, including myself, uh, after a successful career in the film industry. And so what we've discovered working in this Global Women's Leadership Organization, we, we coach and have courses for thousands of women is that we're learning that these this restlessness and these feelings that there's something more to life, that, that that's actually the good news, that, that women are having awakening all over the globe and we're looking for new models, you know, you know, stepping forward. We'd like to have lives that are fired up, that have energy and inspiration. And that's where this merging with the Merge Conference comes up where we're focusing on, well, what does that actually mean, where you are living from your passions and your profession is merged with that, where you're on purpose and you're serving a greater good. What we've found with the women we've been working with is that's where the energy comes from for you. It's actually resources that appear magic. We call it magic and miracles. But it's really the way that you know you're on track to yourself completely rather than trying to actually be something that you're not. I know we had talked the other day. I'm sorry Jeannie couldn't be with us. We had talked about there's a sense that you, you're you working and you're inside a mistaken identity. We've been looking as an, an identity that didn't really belong to us. It's externally sourced. And out of that, so we've been looking outside of ourselves for what we want to do in our in our lives. You know, and if, yeah. anyway, and not to, in, to, to interrupt you, but uh, not to interrupt you, sure. which I'm doing. Um, yes, well, you are. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we do this all the time. Welcome to. <laughs> but what's interesting, what you're saying, and what really resonates, and what you're saying is the following: um, whether whether it's men or women, this seeking to do something uh, uh, more meaningful, I think, is 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 pervasive across you know our culture right now in the West, especially, and even across or abroad the world. Um, it, it, uh, is there a reason why it's happening now? I mean, why is this happening now? In your opinion? Well, in my opinion, I actually think that, um, I, I know that men were dissatisfied too, but it seems that we were trying to turn around the, the Queen Mary, you know, get it back on another track. I think it did take women, uh, traditionally, and you were talking about the way that we learn and the way that we transform. We are a little bit different structurally, how we, how we learn and how we um, view things. And from coming from traditions like our strengths, come from uh, our history and our, our genetics, literally, of taking care of what's interrelated, what are the relationships, how's it going, taking the temperature, seeing that, that and those are actual qualities that are needed in leadership today. I think everyone's seen that top-down hierarchical structures don't actually invite high creativity. They don't invite a sense of ownership of that everything is going well. But if you look at it, whether it's in the corporation or the workplace, or the environment, the, the problems in the world are all a lack of relationship and a sense of feeling connected to and part of something. And that's what so you, you refer to, to anyway, us um, uh, being uh, empathetic. Tatiana, you step in here, add anything? Yeah, actually, I mean, Jose and I spoke about that today. You know, it's this whole aspect of just really being able to be empathetic with each other. Mm -hmm. And even if we take this, let's just say, even if we put it into a design project right now, right? It's all about really being able to understand and relate and being empathetic to the user. And their needs and their goals. User experience, and you're bringing it up in an interesting point. And Ari, you would be, uh, you you could attest to this, and 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 Robert, you can also attest to this. That what's interesting is that my journey and my understanding of these two things came together because I'm a web designer, because of user experience, where I looked at the foundation or the fundamentals of uh, user experience, where there has to be, you know, uh, a, a user focused uh, kind of product. Um, because of the high rate of interaction between an interface or between a software product and a user. Um, and then on top of that, there has to be a huge amount of value provided mm -hmm. uh, and a higher purpose. The reason why Facebook is so successful is not because of the software, it's because of the people that it's connecting. So in a way, you know, I realized that the same thing that is uh, 
what I mentioned to you, and it's hard to mention it in public because it sounds crazy. That 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 in the, here, I'll, I'll do it in this metaphor. Uh, you know, I read a lot of business books. Lorraine read a lot of uh, spiritual books, and one day she commented to me that. And um, Lorraine is your wife. My wife, Lorraine. She she said she said, you know, your books are totally the same because I was co sharing with her the topics or the, what I was saying are totally <laughs> the same. What I'm reading, I'm like, sure, whatever. And I actually then read them. Right. And I'm like. Holy mother of God, it's the same stuff. But that's exactly what mm. happened to me with, you know, being part of this global uh, women's leadership community and and then aligning myself with you. I saw the exact same thing. It's a mirror effect. We're both talking about the same thing, just totally with a different, different language. Different language. Yes. So this, this, this conference is an opportunity for us to ask the questions, to talk about the language, to speak in one, to have the opportunity to speak in a language uh, that is in a safe environment to speak in a, in a language that might not make a lot of sense to maybe other people. Uh, but ultimately, that discussion has to be had. So to yes. me, it's a forum in the, uh, uh, forget about it being a two-day conference for women who want to merge uh, passion and profession. It's a forum on the future. Right. That's what to me it yes. is. It's, this is the, the meeting where, the, the conference, the two days, where we're going to discuss what the agenda for what the future needs to be and how we're going to get there. And and the last thing I'll say because we're running we're we're 10 minutes over time, you know, look, I wish we could have somebody uh, even the CEO of Girls Who Code, which is a really great movement and I'm looking at their website now and it looks pretty cool. Um, it looks very schooly. Um, and uh, that would be a really great guest, mm -hmm. but who we have as uh, our, our one of the conversations, we're doing this a little different in that it's not going to be talks, uh, you know, people standing up and talking. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very conversations. Think of it as uh, Tatiana is now Oprah, and you know, and we're going to have conversations. Yeah, <laughs> there you except, go. Except Swiss. Who's going to be Oprah? Are you going to be awesome. Oprah? <laughs> Either me or Tatiana, or we'll 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 be both of us will take the role. You can be the white version. You can be Dr. Oprah, Phil. Thanks. I'll be Dr. <laughs> Phil. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to have conversations yeah. instead of uh, uh, of just talks and panels and workshops all in the two days. But the CEO of Knock Knock, Jen. Billick, who is a friend and also uh, uh, a pretty amazing woman, and she's, I think, 11, 12 years into it. Um, we have somebody from lynda.com who's going to be joining us. Uh, Linda herself couldn't join us. But uh, Jen, the reason why Jen's important, I have her up on my screen, um, is that she has a pretty cool company that I've followed for the last 10 years, Knock Knock, uh, where we put the fun in functional. Um, and and, it, and it, it just the spirit of the company, it's A, so much her, because mm -hmm. um, she was a writer, she was a copywriter, and she was in the advertising world, um, if I'm getting that right, uh, into a very um, uh, 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 cool business that she's, you know, she, she was in the Inc. 500, you know, she's grown the business substantially. Uh, and, I, and I really think that she's a great, person just to look what has allowed you to do that mm -hmm. um, in addition to all the other conversations. So we're really looking have. at the abilities, the underlying abilities that what allowed are, her yeah, to do that. Exactly. What yeah. are the underlying and, and having that conversation, the panel that we're starting with uh, that you're going to be moderating um, uh, with Lillian, with everyone. Who else is on the panel? Can you introduce? Who are the people and what do they do? Just real quick on yeah, that panel. So we have Lena, um, Lena Shanklin. Lena. Sorry, uh, Lena. I called you Lily. Chini Romero. So which oh, are both? That's a new one. Okay. <laughs> both life coaches. So Lena's a life coach, and right? And Jeannie Bird Romero as and well. And Jeannie is also a life yes. coach, but they also come from entertainment. Yes, background in the entertainment industry, which will be interesting for them to share. You know, to everybody who's going to be at the merge conference, just so they can hear that story and that juxtaposition and you know, how the two of them were able to merge their passion and their profession. That's going to be awesome. And look for uh, the ads in the LA Weekly uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, actually, we're going to run them uh, two weeks before the conference, maybe three, uh, for a special discount. It's going to be a 20% discount in the LA Weekly for you guys. So, yeah, we'll um, be, and also we'll be tweeting out. We'll be tweeting we'll be it Facebooking. out. Facebooking. So, so look out for it that. now, the early bird. So. so the early bird is still going on. Merge, if you bring that up, it's to 289. Uh, and actually, if you guys use... Uh, 289, 289, uh, and it, actually, here's a secret, yeah. uh, and it's not on screen, but if you use the code Jose, um, or Tatiana, actually, if you know how to spell that, but Jose, you will get, a, I think, a 20% discount. Yeah. Is that how much it yeah. costs? Yeah. So, so use that. So we'll see you guys there. And let's wrap up. Ari, last thoughts on, and first of all, thank you so much, Lena, uh, for joining us. I know you're really busy, so this, uh, mm -hmm. this really makes a lot of, uh, th this means a lot. Thank you, Lena. Thank you thank so you. much. Yes.
and looking forward to, to meeting a, It's going to be a deep and it's going to be a fun conversation. One of the things we really look for that we have a lot of passion and aliveness when we're doing our, our conferences and our meetings, and then it's very interactive and very powerful that way. So I'm very happy to, to merge with the two of you and see what we can create over that weekend. Awesome. I'm really looking forward Thank to you, it. Thank you, Lena. Thanks. Closing thoughts, Ari. Um, yeah, just one thing I was thinking is it's interesting the role of women in this whole thing because women are traditionally more about nurturing relationships where guys are more about hierarchy, top mm -hmm. down. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. something really interesting I'm noticing. We, we're pack animals. That's right. We fall in line quickly and the alpha leads and you go through in the right. direction. It, that's right. It's easier actually, by the way, and I moderated both men and women, it's easier actually to moderate men to go in a, in a, in a singular direction, harder a little bit to get women to go in the same mm -hmm. direction. That's right. Well, what's interesting, what you just said, which is actually what we're doing in our women's community, is actually break down the hierarchy. And we, we do what's called rotating leadership. It's lateral Co leadership. Co-creating, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which you is know? coincidentally, you read the Harvard Business Review, and what do they talk about? Lateral leadership. But you know what? Even in Switzerland, we don't have one president. We have a group of six have, people. You, yeah, you it's have boards. You know? You have uh, mm -hmm. boards, yeah. So I'm consulting a company that's run like that. Yeah. And it's possible, actually. It's not some hippie concept where you can't run a company in actually agile is lateral leadership, it's self-managed teams That's right. uh, going to a higher purpose, to a goal. If, so if you look at agile and you look at religion, you know, they're kind of similar. Um, so that's a very interesting thought and I'm glad you brought it up because it makes up, it, makes up, it, it explains a lot of why the conference is what it is and what the follow-up conferences that we're going to do in the year are going to be. Final thoughts, closing thoughts. I'm just super excited about merch and, you know, I'm very excited. Lena was here today with us and uh, I just really invite every woman who's listening to this today to just really check it out. Go online to schoolrocks.com. We'll be tweeting and Facebooking and uh, let's just really create a new and exciting future. Awesome. Thank you so much. Robert Haydock, anything you, what do you think of today's episode? I mean, awesome. As always. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Can't wait for the next one. Long time viewer, and thank you so much for your support all these years. So next week, we're going to be going specific step by step on the process. Think of it as process for dummies. Please don't sue me, Wiley. Uh, Web process for dummies was this publisher of the for dummies series. Um, and uh, what else are we going to do? No, we're going to do that step by step on the process. Uh, watch the episode, sign up for Merge, stick around, uh, and join us next week when you watch his work.